Hello, it's Scott Manley here, back on the moon and ready to rescue my fellow astronaut. So uh, if you look at the mission elapsed time, it says 3,241 days. So apparently uh, this, um, this innovative lander has been here on long endurance duty. I think, honestly, with all the budget cuts, they forgot that they left these guys up here, which is a good thing because they are flying the old lander design and they have lots of fuel left. And so now we have seen the, um, our target coming over the horizon. We are now basically lifting off and we are burning for our lives, trying to get up to orbital speed before he passes us by. We really want to make this first burn and launch as close as possible to the, um, the target. We want to basically make sure that we, we spend the least amount of fuel during the rendezvous. And so launch timing is absolutely critical. Now, you can't wait till he's right overhead because it takes this vehicle a while to actually get up to orbital speed. You can see this guy is still approaching us at 300 meters per second because we are only going at 200. So very quickly, this guy is going to catch up to us. But of course, we are doing our best, going great guns burning as quickly as we can to try and catch up. And you can see him now, he's down to 13 kilometers distance. Uh, looks like he's off to one side, so we're gonna have to adjust our orbital planes. But right now, all we are concerned about is getting up to speed. Now we're at 375 meters per second. We're just 150 meters per second away from the actual orbital velocity, and he is now within 10 kilometers. 450, 460, and the fuel tank, external tanks are dry, so we dump those. Since we are suborbital, those will fall back to the surface eventually. But uh, we are almost at orbital velocity, and there we go. Okay, so now we are, we have a periaps which is really low and an apoaps which is really high, so we want to kind of circularize our orbit as quickly as possible and then try to start working on the rendezvous. There we go. There. Nice. So what, let's take stock. So there he is, 8.6 kilometers away. Let us try figuring out how to get to him. So he is in an orbit slightly above us, slightly north of us. So first thing is we're going to use the normal throw. We're going to use smart ASS on mechanical Jebelot for this. And we're just going to thrust at very low rates. Yes, I know this is exploiting the throttle bug, but I'd rather rendezvous than crash into him because, you know, astronauts don't explode any more spectacularly than the, the rockets. Be nice to have a mission success. So there, you can see that I've adjusted the orbit so that they cross up ahead. And once we get there, we will thrust in the other direction. These are basically broad, um, you know, large scale maneuvers rather than fine maneuvers. I'm going to bring up, there's the vessel information, 18 tons. That's what this thing weighed. You can see why they wanted to cut the costs. The other vehicle, the lander, weighs only like three tons at most when it's fully, fully fueled. Oh, look, there's someone else on the surface. Looks like some debris from some other... Oh, I guess that's... Fl oh, yeah, it's on the surface. That that might be... Uh, maybe that's his other lander. Yeah, coming in close here. We're trying to time warp as much as we can. But unfortunately, because we're so close to the surface, time warp is going to be limited. Just trying to eyeball when the planes cross. And now once we're there, we hit the anti-normal button, that's normal minus, and thrust in the other direction. It looks like we're going to overshoot a little. I have not enabled the reaction control system just yet because I think I can use that for fine maneuvers later on. As I've mentioned, this astronaut is completely dry. He has no fuel left in his tanks. So we are going to have to maneuver this tiny, or this big ship towards that tiny astronaut and also orient it such a way that the ladder is something he can grab onto. Now, it's a good thing we are flying this because this actually has a proper descent lander, ladder, which means there will be much more for that astronaut to grab onto, much more area. The other vehicle that's in a higher orbit 
just had the tiny lander on the main capsule, so that would have a lot of trouble rendezvousing. Okay, so now we're behind. What we want to do is basically slow down thrust towards him. That will drop us out of orbit a little. Uh, we're also a little high. Uh, yeah, we're thrusting backwards here. And that is bring yeah, so now our periaps is minus 45 kilometers. Point, uh, well, I guess what I'm saying is we're going to fall in towards the planet, towards the moon. So we're going to have to keep correcting vertically as we, as he comes in close. I'm not worried about fuel consumption here. I'm really more worried about catching up with him as quickly as possible. As I've mentioned in my lunar escape system video, the astronauts and the, the Apollo project, they would have four hours if they had to launch into orbit and uh, without the module. The lunar escape system, as I mentioned, was a kind of the, the equivalent of a rocket attached to a lawn chair. And the pilots would sit on top of it and be rescued by the, the command module in orbit. And they'd have to get there within four minutes, four hours. So I think I can do this here. And now we're almost within a kilometer. Now I'm trying to get my velocity up, back up to orbital velocity. And I'm just basically hitting the circularize button here, letting it correct for me. Yeah, you can see that. I'm using Mechanical Jeb a lot here, but you can also see that they've removed the, the Orbital Rendezvous autopilot, which uh, I never figured out how to get to work. I mean, I had a pretty good idea how it worked, but in the end, I kind of like this maneuvering. So again, we're, we're just going to try and correct over a little. It's kind of cool that we are so low that we can see all the rocks on the lunar surface. And there we go, 650 meters. This is just going to take a lot of fine manipulation and maneuvering to get close to Wildorf. Wildorf can do nothing but sit tight. Um, you know, spacesuits, because of the pressure inside them, they uh, are very inflexible. It's like sitting inside a balloon shaped like a human body. So uh, you'll notice the astronauts tend to have their legs kind of held in a sitting position. This is called the neutral position. Because actually to move anything takes a lot of effort against the spacesuits. Now, you know, they're working on improving that, but still, uh, you know, NASA spacesuits are now getting on for something like 30 years old. They're mostly actually derived from the Apollo suits uh, of the 70s. Interesting fact, did you know that the company that uh, started making the spacesuits used to make corsets? Because... The corsets actually work in a similar way to spacesuits. Spacesuits are trying to hold in a highly pressurized uh, environment. And uh, corsets are trying to hold in a highly pressurized piece of flab that would otherwise spill over. So, yeah. Interesting fact there. A lot of uh, hand sewing goes into these things. Astronaut gloves have to be tailor-made for every single astronaut because of the the tiny differences in the hand. It's very important that you have great manual dexterity and the, the gloves cost something like quarter of a million dollars each. So uh, yeah, you know, that's what uh, spacesuits cost. They do have apparently new spacesuits getting ready um, for future programs, but again, they're all pretty much based on the same principle. So now we're close enough that uh, we no longer see the um, the visual cue, the, the marker in orbit, we can actually see our astronaut floating there a little high. So I've dropped myself down a lower, I guess, just trying to come in below him so that the natural orbit will, will bring me in below. It will go in faster. Oh, look, there's the lunar arch there passing by, but no time for sightseeing right now. We have a pilot to rescue, and if we uh, stop flying, then we will fly past him, just like we have now. Who was sightseeing, damn it? As well, at least we still have plenty of fuel left. We've barely used one-eighth of a tank. Maybe, maybe one-tenth of a tank. Maybe, yeah. Maybe one-fifth of a tank. How about that? Well, regardless, we have plenty of endurance here. Yes, there's the arch. Don't pay attention to it. I hear it does strange things to the people's mind if you stare into it. We're in within 50 meters. I'm really just trying to figure out how to work this. Um, so it turns out that the RCS on this vehicle is basically utterly useless 
for anything except emergency moving, except for moving the capsule on its own. I try to start sliding sideways, but it does nothing. There's too much mass on this capsule and having all the RCS in the nose means that it wants to rotate the craft rather than point it. So if I leave the RCS on and the smart ASS, then Mechanical Jeb will take all my fuel and fling it into space, not really doing very much with it. So I return back to using the, the rocket engine as he fl Wildor flows out to um, 110 meters. I wasted that close approach. <laughs> He's probably shouting at us saying, what the hell do you think you're doing? I could fly better than that. Well, he has a... He could fly better than that if he actually had any fuel left. Unfortunately, needs be, needs must. We will have to come up with other ways. So now boosting down, trying to get in the same orbital plane as him. Same orbital altitude. Uh, yep. Got to be very careful not to overshoot with this thing because it takes so long for it to turn. That's a little better. Now anti-normal time. You know, I could fly this manually, but, uh, well, I could fly the positioning manually, but it's kind of makes sense for me to adjust these things by hand. Okay, now I think we've got roughly neutral position with him. Let's try and get a little closer. Just going to use tiny thrusts from now on. Oh, there's planet Kerbin providing a great sight. And I guess that's Minmus straight ahead of us. You see that tiny point of light there? Yeah, once again, trying the RCS system, but no, it is utterly hopeless. You see, I turn off mechanical jab and try to thrust, and it just basically turns me rather than anything else. It'd be really nice if the, the RCS system would work in concert with the... or the RCS translate would work in concert with the gyroscope, the, the torque from the capsule. But never mind, I think I'm just going to have to do this entire rendezvous with the rocket. Yep, he's floating away again. Once again, we are teasing him. I uh, hope uh, he doesn't get mad at us. But hey, look at that view. No, it just, it just is not working. Trying our best. I, maybe if we come back to this capsule and modify it, we should add an extra set of RCS jets at the bottom to balance out the torque. That's another tool I would like long term would be a, an RCS balance display to show where the wh wh how the torque works. Okay, um, let's... Well, yeah, it just wants to... <laughs> this is not good. I really want my fine control back. Uh, okay. Well, at least he didn't flow out to 100 meters this time. 28 meters. Okay, let's uh, get up. You can see the, um, the thrust vectoring going nuts there, even though it's not firing. It's a good thing these helmets are easy to see in space. So preparing in advance to burn once we think we get in. And uh, let's fold away that gear because it would be really unfortunate if we smacked the astronaut with the landing gear, hit him like a baseball bat and have to go out and get him. Okay, now apparently that's going to self-compensate. Let's go that way a little. Just a little. And... Oh, he's getting so close! If he had, if he had any fuel left, this would be the time to switch to the EVA and just, you know, thrust him in. But... We are going to manually do this without RCS, using only rockets on a ship which weighs a ton. Fortunately, it looks like there is a spare seat available, so we could just take him on board and fly home. There we go. Look, oh, that is, that is beautifully lined up. And it just so happens the ladder is right there. Okay, so uh, maybe just... A little burn that way so that he hits the ladder and switch frame. Here he comes. Yes! <coughs> Beautiful. <coughs> oh my goodness, I've been holding my breath. Okay, so let's get on board. What?
I cannot board a full module, but there's only two guys in there. What the hell? I need to get in. I need to refill my fuel and my oxygen and empty my poop bags. I hate there's three. Okay. Okay. So let's, um, it says there's three on board. This must be a save file glitch or something. Let's uh, take out one of these pilots. Uh, which one is the one that's missing? Okay. Let's get him out. Okay. Now, I guess he's in my way in the ladder. So let's RCS around him so that he can get in and refill his fuel. And then I guess he can't fly home. We need to come up with a different rescue plan for him. Um, but yeah, I think I do have a plan and that will involve the EVA suit. So let me, uh, get back to his control. This is spinning a little, but we are, I hope we're in a safe orbit. I think we are. Yeah, we're totally in a safe orbit. Okay. So now look, he's on board. He's refueling. That ladies and gentlemen is a successful rescue, but we still need to get back to Kerbin. But that will be another video. Until then, fly safe.